Praise God. Praise God. Give him some glory in this house. Give him the highest praise. Hallelujah. 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 He's worthy to be praised. Amen. The word is coming from the book of Proverbs today, y'all. The book of Proverbs, chapter 16. When everyone have it, stand. That'll let me know that you have it. It's in the Old Testament, Proverbs 16. Amen. Amen. And we're going to go to verse 11. Proverbs 16 and verse 11. Adjust weight and balance are the Lord's. All the weights of the bags are his work. And I'm going to stop right there. Father God, we thank you. We give you the glory this morning, God. We give you the honor, God. We magnify you and exalt you today, God. We thank you, God, for your presence right now, God, for your words that when two or three are gathered, you are in the midst. We thank you, God, for being in the midst of us, God. We thank you, God, for your Holy Ghost fire today, God. We thank you, God, for the, for the illumination that you're doing in this place, the transformation that you're doing in this place, God, the holiness that you're doing in this place, God. We thank you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. God. We ask that you touch each eyes and ears, God, and heart right now, God, that they will receive your spirit, receive your word, receive your presence, God, that they will experience you today, God, like never before, God. Oh, Father God, we ask that you have your way with them, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, God. God, I ask that you bless me, God. Bless me with your presence, God. Empty me out and pour more and more and more of you, God. In me, God. God, let the words that come out my mouth, God, be your word, God. Let your word be like fire, God. Hallelujah, God, that is shut up in our bone, God. Let your word illuminate and transform today, God. Use me, God. I'm your sanctuary, God. Do what you please today with me, God. In Jesus' mightiest name, we say this prayer. Amen. 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 Y'all can sit down. How did I get to this scripture and this word? Let me explain this to y'all. God do different stuff with me before he gave me a title and a word, but this time I was watching a skit. And in the skit, the lady had a knock on her door. And when she answered the door, it was a man at the door and telling her, you got to come with me. It's t your time is now to come with me. And she was like, what are you talking about? I got family coming and I, I got to prepare the food for them and everything. He was like, you died. And now it's your time to come with me. So she looked around in her house talking about, what you talking about, I died? And then she saw herself laying on the floor. And it, she went with him. And the next skit, they was in a different place. And they sat down. And when they sat down, he pulled out a scale. And he had a white feather, a big white feather. And he took the scale, and what he, with the feather, he laid the feather on the scale. And the scale just went up and down. So then he reached over. And he grabbed her heart and put it on the scale. And, and when he put it on the scale, the scale was still going up and down, up and down, trying to figure out what is the weight. And she started speaking and saying, well, this happened 
in my life and I felt bad that I did this and I, I felt bad that I said this and she started speaking on everything that she done wrong. And I said to God, I said, God, where is in the Bible did it talk about the weight of the heart? And he took me to Proverbs. And when he took me here and I read the scripture, I said, okay, God, so what's the title? And God said, what is the weight of your heart? What is the weight of your heart? Now, I want you to go back and think about the lady who I just told you when he took her heart and put it on the weight. It wasn't no big screen that showed her sin or anything, but she knew what was in her heart because it came back in her spirit, man. It came back to memory, the things she done and the things she did. And God is asking you today, what is the weight of your heart? And I, 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 me being curious, when he told me that, I said, okay, God, what's the, I, I need to know the weight of human heart, I, you know, the people heart, because we different sizes and different shapes and everything, and me thinking, I, well, our heart going to weigh different sizes. I, I had the nerve to look it up on Google, you know, if, it, if our heart weights shift and get heavy. And it surprised me, in the natural, our heart only weighed less than a pound. But in the spirit, our heart could weigh more. And I said, God, that's funny. He said, the weight in your heart is what you allow to be in your heart. I said, okay, God. He said right here in verse 11, he said, I just wait, a just wait and balance are the Lord. Now, that means he had the decision to weigh your heart and to balance out what is going on in you. Now, it's up to us to allow God to balance our heart out. To fix our heart. To move some stuff out of our heart. And then he say, all the weight of the bags are his. Now, that means it belongs to him and not to us. And I also saw it as the bags of weight is what we holding on to. We need to let go some stuff. And it's not just unforgiveness. It's not just what we was taught from our parents or learned from school or events that happen. It's some other things that weigh us down, y'all. Can I be truthful with y'all? Sometimes your mouth cause a weight Your mouth cause a weight. And I'm telling you that because that's me. I'm the first partaker. My mouth, it cause a weight. It cause you to have bag full of weights. Because as the people of God, we have to be careful we have to be careful what we speak. We have to be careful what we say out of our mouths. Yeah. We have to be careful how we perceive stuff. Mm -hmm. We have to be careful because those things become weights. I was sharing with somebody this week and they said to me, well, I'm so grateful and I'm so thankful to God that he's doing this and he's doing that. But then when you come back, you complain. When you come back, you murmur. 
Come on. Come on. Yes. So you either going to trust God and let that weight be light or you want to speak on what you think and make your weight heavy. See, I want my scale to be balanced. I don't want my scale where my heart is heavy. Because God even says in his word, my yoke is what? Light. And my burden is what? My yoke is easy and my burden is light. That's what he said. And when I thought about the yoke, y'all know back in the days we had mules on the farm. Them cows. And they would put a yoke on them. And I remember my grandfather when he put the yoke on a cow. And he hooked that heavy plow on the back. Before he plowed that ground, he always waited at the right time and the right seasons to do it, right? That ground had to be soft before he put that yoke on that cow to plow that ground. God said to me when I saw that in the spirit, he said, I give you no more than what you can handle. Because if that ground is hard, it's going to be weight. It's going to be hard to plow that ground. But if he wait till you wait till it rain, you wait till God fix it. You wait till the time God said, now is the season that you move on this thing, that you speak on this thing, that you do what you need to do. That yoke is easy. And that plowing is so smooth. I saw God in the spirit as I was thinking about it, my grandfather, when he did plow the ground, he didn't walk behind the, the cow. He didn't walk behind the mule. He got him from the side. He was right next to him. And that's how God is with us. So we need to give our yoke, our burdens, and give it to God. Let him take full control. Stop trying to take control of it and putting your mouth on stuff. Because you end up messing yourself up. You end up being heavy hearted. You end up can't seeing what God is trying to do in you. And what he's trying to do through you for others. Because you are the one that God want to use. But our heart. Our heart have to be balanced. And when it's balanced, the scale is like here. It's not off. It's not up and down. It's balanced. And God had to show me that about it's some stuff in our heart that we need to get delivered from. It's some stuff that we have spoken that we need to get delivered from. When your heart is right, when you, when you, when you start speaking, the, when, it, mm, when your heart is right and you start speaking, in Proverbs um, 16 and 21, it said, The wise in heart shall be called pardon, and the sweetness of the lips increase learning. That means, God, you, you teachable. That means with God, you forever learning. Your heart is learning something new. Because guess what? You don't, you don't grab on to the plan of God, the wisdom of God, the will of God. Your heart is in the right place that it could be balanced. But when we have our own thoughts and we speaking out some stuff, it causes our heart to get heavy and off balance. I had that to happen to me this week. That I got, I got kind of frustrated because I didn't understand. I didn't understand what was going on. Because when you out here and you want to be a blessing and help people, come on, come on. God had to show me that I am still dealing with frustration. And frustration would mess me up. I might not be saying nothing. I might not be cussing them out. I may be just walking away like, okay. But guess what? If it's in here, your heart is unbalanced. 
we have to let go of some stuff. And we have to realize, again, the enemy is out here to kill, steal, and destroy. And he's going to do it by no means. You're going to be tested by no means. And he can test you about, you could go around people, you, you could be a person who used to drink and go around people who drink and it won't even bother you. But he will have somebody to say something or do something to trigger you. And you have to make sure that your heart is in the right place. You have to make sure that your heart is balanced in God and not balanced in yourself. Because sometimes as human beings, we give ourselves a pat on the back because we didn't cuss them out. Or we didn't drink with them, but that desire of drinking was still there. You, you passed the test this time, but it did flare up in you. You, you passed the test this time, you didn't cuss them out verbally, but inside you said you no good son, but nothing, 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 nothing. Come on now. Come on, come on. Yeah. Come on. Tell the truth. That's right. Come on. Our heart has to be balanced in Christ. We have to really be real with ourselves. Real in the spirit. Real with God. People are keep backsliding because they not being real. They doing in they self. They delivering they self instead of them letting the Holy Ghost deliver them. That's why we have backsliders. Because we never fully give God our whole heart to deliver us. We have our own perception of how deliverance should look and sound or the way it should go. But sit still and let God show you your heart. He ain't going to show it to you all at one time. But when he starts showing it to you, you ain't going to like it. And you're going to say, God, forgive me. Empty that out of me. Pluck it up out of me. Burn it up out of me. Do what you have to do, but get it up out of me. The word always come back to the same. Work out your own salvation. I'm not going to never stop saying that. Because it's about you individually and your relationship with God. All I am to do, to do is to teach you and to show you what God is trying to do with you, in you, and for you to equip you. So when you go up, mm, when the world come up against you, you will be able to stand. Not just in the natural, but in the spirit realm. You're going to get texted. Every day you're going to get tested. But guess what? Who in your heart? Who you letting control your heart? Who you letting drive your heart? You or God? Look at your heart. Look at your heart. What's in your heart? How heavy is it? He said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So how heavy is it? The scripture for the mouth is the heart. It's in um, Proverbs 16, 23. The heart of the wise teaches the mouth and add of learning to lips. Your mouth will start speaking life. Amen. Amen. Because what's in your heart flows out, right? So we got God in our heart. What's going to come out? And it's going to add. What God is speaking today, he's adding to you. And you're, what you learn today, you're going to speak to someone else. And then what you learn today, you're going to start speaking over yourself. Proverbs 16, verse 9. A man's heart advises his way, but the Lord directs his steps. You got your own thinking. Going back to what I was speaking about in the beginning. You have your own thinking. You perceive it this way. But God have a totally different plan. And even though you may try in your plan. Can I say you did, tell you this? Only You may try to do it the way you want to do it. 
and God is still in it. Because God is a God that approves and allows. So if it happened, he allowed it. And he allowed it there so you can learn from it. Amen? Because he knows if you learn from him, it's going to bring glory to him. It's going to bring glory to the kingdom. So the, some of the stuff we go through is for us to learn from it. And God get the glory. We still in Proverbs 16, verse 1. And it say, The preparations, S, of the heart in man. And the answer of the tongue is, is from the Lord. So you have to allow God to prepare your heart. Amen. That's why I say you got to pray sometime and ask God, should you say anything? Should you not say anything? Because yes, people going to come up against you and say some stuff. And you, your natural self want to flare up. Yes. Your natural self want to flare, but then you have to say, look, let me back down. Yeah. We'll talk about it later. And you go before God and you let God deal with you. Because when your natural man flare, that's not God. And we're supposed to be an example of God to the ones out in the world. So you have to make sure your heart is, be, is prepared for what God is going to do with you and for you. Because if no matter what situation we in, we have to be prepared. That's why in the morning or at night or whenever you choose, you need to ask God, prepare me for today. Prepare me for what I'm going to have to go through. Prepare me for the person who I'm going to have to stand before today, God. Because some of us still have triggers. And we don't want people calling us hypocrites. Talking about she's supposed to be saved and look at her going off like a firecracker. Katie, kaboom. We have to let God prepare our heart. Every day. Every day we be made new in him, become new creatures. I started to get up and introduce myself today and say, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm Evangelist Victoria Gilchrist Bowman. And y'all would have looked at me because y'all would have been said, wait a minute, we know her, but you don't know me because I'm not the same that I was yesterday. And I'm not the same person that I was 15 minutes ago because God is constantly transforming and changing and putting in and taking out. Of. I'm made new. I'm made new. I'm made new. And that's how we're supposed to be feeling and thinking about ourselves. Stop letting yourself stay in the old state because today is a new day. And when it's a, it's a new day, he's doing a new thing. And it's a new time. And it's a new situation. And it's a new you with a new heart. Let God prepare your heart so your heart could be the answer of tongue. It's from the Lord. So when you're speaking, you're speaking in love. It's God that's speaking through you and not yourself. And you're speaking in humility and it's not yourself, but it's God. And you're speaking in peace that it's not yourself, it's God. Uh, you know, because you you made new. You you was him. You were created in him in his image. So when they look at you, they see less of you and more of him. And come on, y'all. I want y'all to understand the weight of your heart can mess us up. And God wants us to be balanced. It's just like saying you either be hot or cold. But if you lukewarm, he will spill you out. So if you're either up or down. But if you ain't balanced, he's going to what? Spill you out. The scale got to be even. We got to be right. We got to be holy. We got to be pure. 
The words say, have a pure heart and clean hands. We need to let God rise up in us and scatter the enemies. Not just the enemies on the outside, but the enemies that's in us. Because we have to remember, when the enemy come in, he come in one way. But he flees seven. But guess what? Sometimes that one enemy that left you, when he come back, he bring in seven more. So as the people of God, we have to be ready. And we have to be delivered and set free. We have to be mindful of the God that we serve. And we have to really cause our ears to be tentative to hear his voice. And not our own perception. And our own thoughts. Because God is saying, eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard. Our hearts and our mind has not even fact up what he's trying to do for us. We should be coming in here every Sunday and Bible study night and telling people about miracles and what God has done in our life. But because our heart is not balanced. We miss God. We miss the blessings of God. We, we, we don't get the peace that we think we should have. We don't get the financial breakthrough that we think we should have. We don't get where we're supposed to be in God because our heart is not balanced. God said today, man, let me balance your heart. He said, let me empty the weight out. He said, you don't have to carry them stones. You don't have to carry the weight. You don't have to carry your past. You don't have to carry the, the words that people spoken over you. You don't have to carry nothing that is not of me. I'm a God of heavenly things. I'm a God of light. I'm a God of love. I'm a God of joy and peace. And anything that's outside of that is not of me. So why are you carrying it? Why are you holding on to it? Release it right now in the name of Jesus. Release the mindset you have, that taught behavior, that taught reaction. Release it. That's not me. My heart is filled. My heart is filled. My brother earlier read from Hebrew. I hear you, Lord. Hebrew 12, y'all. It's getting hot up here. <laughs> it's getting hot. I don't know if the Holy Ghost on y'all like it's on me, but I, I know I, it's getting hot. <sighs> and it says in Hebrew 12 verse 1, Wherefore, seeing we also are come past about with great about with so great a cloud of witness. Let us lay aside every weight. The Holy Ghost going to witness to you, y'all. He going to be with you. A cloud be with you everywhere. If you can see that one cloud and you can go up down the street to Hoffman and look back and you still see that same cloud. So he going to be with you. He going to be with you. So wherever you go, he's right there. He's right there. And it said, lay, and it said let us lay aside every weight. Everything that is not of God, give it up. Give it up. Give it up. In the name of Jesus, give it up. Give it up. Let it go out of your heart. What your mama said in the past, what your daddy did in the past, give it up. We uprooting today. We uprooting some stuff today. We giving up some stuff today. We getting to the root with frustration.
shit coming from? We get to the root where anger and disappointment and rejection coming from. Give it up today. Today. Now. Now give it up. Give it up now. Give it up. Yeah. Even the ones that molested you, give it up. Give it up. Those that lied on you and betrayed you, give it up. In the name of Jesus, give it up. Give it up. And the sin which does so easily beset us, let us run with patience the race that is set before us. It's going to take some time. But at least you will be able to recognize. And then when you recognize what you're going to do, because you learned today, to give it to God. I believe every time God speak a word in here about healing and deliverance, when you go home, some stuff start coming up. You start remembering some things. And when you start remembering them things, say, God, I thank you for deliverance. God, I thank you for healing me. God, I thank you, because that's what the enemy plan is. He wait till you well rested and everything is going good and your week has been good and everything, and then here he come. Somebody say something and it bring up a familiar spirit. It will take you back into a past. You don't re realize it took you back into a past because it was a trigger for you. You have to realize the enemy used those things as triggers. Let God in. He's knocking. I want y'all to say, come in, Lord. Tell him, come on in, Jesus. Do what you have to do. Come in, Lord. Tell him, come on in, Lord. Do what you have to do. Uproot some stuff, God. Tear down some stuff, God. Break up the shackles, God. Do what you have to do, God. In me, God. In my heart, God. Come in, God. Heal, God. Deliver, God. Do what you have to do, God. So I could be more like you. I could be more like you. And the word says right here, looking unto Jesus, the authority, the author, I'm sorry, the author and the finisher of our faith. He got authority. No matter what goes on in our life, God got authority to handle it. I don't have authority to handle everything in your life, but he does. And he's your finisher. He said he's going to complete in you what he started in you. Despite of where you, how you see yourself right now, he showed you some great things about you. He showed you how he want to use you. He done spoke some things over you. And you looking with your little piece and saying, well, God, I don't see that. And God said, no, that is you. You let me do it. Let me do it a little bit every day. Every day you are a new creature in me. Every day you are made new in me. Every day you learning more of me. Every day. Every day. Hallelujah. The finisher of our faith. Who we got faith in? You got faith. If you got faith in him, then you need to move yourself out the way. Because evidently, if you are still in control, your faith ain't in him. In him, it's in yourself. Hallelujah. 
And he said, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, <laughs> despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Can I share something with y'all? God, Jesus did this for us. And in the word, it even said he sit at the right hand of his father, but he got a seat for us at the right hand of him. That we could sit at the throne with him. But before we get there, y'all, we got to go through what he went through. And, and the Bible doesn't talk about Jesus really going through anything other than the 40 days and, and him going through what he had to go through with people trying to test him and everything. But I'm talking about the hard stuff when he was young coming up, y'all. Yeah. The rudest stuff. I'm pretty sure that he went through some stuff because he had to deal with the Pharisees and the Sadducees that was in the synagogues that where he was at. That he had to show them God and, you know, come on now. Yeah. And that's us. We are the people of God that God want to use. And at the same time, he getting us ready. He getting us ready for him, y'all. The coming of him, y'all. He getting us ready for thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven, y'all. Do you know it's some things that God got up in heaven that he want to give us in earth? But we got to get ready. He ain't going to give it to us if we don't have the right heart, the right spirit, the right wisdom, the right understanding. If we don't have truth, we can't receive it. We got to let God have his way. Get out the way. See yourself stepping to the side. See yourself, just see yourself laying at his feet. That's how I see myself sometimes. I imagine myself laying at the feet of God. And sometimes I literally get down at the feet of God. And I lay on the floor. And I just see myself. And when I see myself, man, oh God, I experience God a different way. I see God doing some mighty things. I see God doing some mighty things. He said his yoke is easy and his burden is light. I'm going to tell y'all what I told my sister. I called my sister and I said, sis, it's time for you to go buy a house. I said, go start looking. She said, thank you. I received that. I called her a couple of weeks later. Did you start looking? She said, no. I said, baby girl, don't let God force you to move because you don't know how it's going to happen. Don't let God force you to move. And because this word came forth, I'm telling you, don't force God to make you move. Take this word and run with it. Take this word and, and get before God and say, God, do what you have to do with me. Do what you have to do. Don't let him force you. Because it don't feel good. Take it from somebody. You might lose some, some things you don't want to lose. You might be put in some long suffering because you don't want to go but be obedient. Long suffering. And that's one of our fruits. But are we equipped and ready for that? Are we ready to, to endure? I keep hearing God say, let God arise and our enemies be scattered. Let God arise, y'all, and our enemies be scattered. Let God arise and the enemies be scattered. Hallelujah, that the enemy that's been speaking to your mind be scattered. The enemy that been is a whispering in your heart, be scattered. The enemy that have your heart bound, be scattered. The enemy that have your heart in darkness and full of deceit and lies, be scattered. The enemy be scattered. That you could 
to see and hear and know God. Be scattered. Amen. And it says right here. Be scattered. Hmm. Hallelujah. I bless God for this word, y'all. I'm not going to go no further. I don't feel I need to go any further. But is there anybody, anyone that's in here 